Every October 6, the Catholic Church commemorates St. Bruno of Cologne, founder of the Carthusian Order of Monks who remain notable for their strictly traditional and austere rule of contemplative life. Bruno was born to one of the principal families in Cologne in the year 1030. Little is known of his early years, except that he studied theology in the present-day French city of Reims before returning to his native land. He was most likely ordained a priest around 1055 and provided with a canonry at St. Cunibitz. In 1056, Bishop Gervais recalled him to Reims to head the Episcopal School, which at the time included the direction of the schools and the oversight of all the educational establishments of the diocese. For 18 years, Bruno led the school, acquiring an excellent reputation as a philosopher and theologian. Among his students were Pope Urban II, Cardinal Bishop Rangier of Reggio, Bishop Robert of Langres, and a large number of prelates and abbots. In 1075, Bruno was appointed Chancellor of the Archdiocese of Reims, which coincided with the appointment of the new bishop, Manassas de Gournay, a violent aristocrat with no real vocation for the church. In 1077, at the urging of Bruno and the clergy at Reims, Bishop de Gournay was suspended at a council at Orton. The bishop responded by having his retainers pull down the houses of his accusers, confiscate their goods, sell their benefices, and even appealed to the Pope. Bruno avoided the city until a definite sentence was released in 1080 which compelled Bishop de Gournay to withdraw and take refuge with Henry IV, Holy Roman Emperor, the fierce opponent of Pope Gregory VII. On the verge of being appointed as bishop, Bruno instead followed a vow he had made to renounce secular concerns and withdrew. Under the direction of Robert of Molesmey, they band together along with other hermits which later on becomes the Order of Cistercians. However, after a short stay there, Bruno soon found that this was not his vocation. Along with six of his companions, they went to Bishop Hugh of Grenoble. According to legend, the bishop had a vision of these men under a chaplet of seven stars. He installed them in 1084 in a mountainous and uninhabited spot in the lower Alps of the Dauphiné, in a place named Chartreuse, not far from Grenoble. They built an oratory with small individual cells at a distance from each other where they lived isolated and in poverty, entirely occupied with prayer and study. These men had a reputation for learning and were frequently honored by the visits of Saint Hugh who became like one of themselves. In the year 1090, Bruno's former pupil, Eudes of Châtillon was elevated to the highest seat and became known as Pope Urban II. Resolved to continue the work of reform commenced by Gregory VII, the Pope was in dire need of competent and devoted allies so he called on his former mentor to Rome. Bruno's influence remained entirely hidden and confidential. Lodged in the Lateran with the Pope himself, privy to his most private counsels, he worked as an advisor but wisely kept in the background apart from the fiercely partisan rivalries in Rome and within the Curia. Shortly after his arrival in Rome, the papal party was forced to evacuate to the south by the arrival of Henry IV with his own antipope in tow. Bruno resisted efforts to name him Archbishop of Reggio Calabria. Instead, Bruno begged to return again to his solitary life, but Pope Urban II wanted him near the papal court where he could be called at need. The place for his new retreat and some followers who had joined him, was in the Diocese of Squillus, in a small forested high valley, where the band constructed a little wooden chapel and cabins. His patron there was Count Roger I of Sicily and Calabria and uncle of the Duke of Apulia, who granted him the lands they occupied, and a close friendship developed. Bruno went to the Gishgard court at Melito to visit the Count when he got sick and to baptize his son, Roger, the future king of Sicily. Because of their friendship and the generosity of Count Roger I, the monastery of St. Stephen was built in 1095, near the original hermitage dedicated to the Virgin. Bruno died on October 6, 1101, in Serra San Bruno. After his death, the Carthusians of Calabria dispatched a roll-bearer who traveled through Italy, France, Germany, and England, 
stopping to announce the death of Bruno. In return, the communities inscribed upon his role, in prose or verse, the expression of their regrets, with promises of prayers. Many of these roles have been preserved, but few are so extensive or so full of praise as that about Bruno. Many witnesses celebrated the extent of his knowledge and the fruitfulness of his instruction. His disciples praised his three chief virtues, his great spirit of prayer, extreme mortification, and devotion to the Blessed Virgin. Bruno was buried in the little cemetery of the Hermitage of Santa Maria. In 1513, his bones were discovered with the epitaph, H. Sunt Ossa Magistri Brunonus, which translates to, these are the bones of the Master Bruno, over them. Since the Carthusian order maintains a strict observance of humility, Saint Bruno was never formally canonized. He was not included in the Tridentine calendar, but in the year 1623 Pope Gregory XV included him in the general Roman calendar for celebration on October 6. For more information about every saints and their feast day, please like and subscribe to our channel, House of Prayers for Everyone.